You know, the third season of Night Gallery was a mishmash of uh, episodes that either uh, sort of worked or basically didn't really uh, deserve the light of day uh, from an uh, episodic standpoint. But for me, this is a very underrated episode. A lot of people have uh, ragged on it, but I, I enjoy it because it ties into uh, Rod Serling's uh, fascination with, uh, with boxing. Now, even though it uh, didn't, uh, it was not written by Rod Serling per se, uh, it kind of kept that, uh, that Twilight Zone uh, boxing, uh, what do you call it, thematic in it. So uh, this uh, review is on the episode called The Ring with the Red Velvet Ropes. Now, uh, the plot of this, of the January 7, 1973 episode, the 10th episode of the third season, uh, when a boxer wins the heavyweight championship, he finds himself transported to another reality where he must uh, fight again in the night, uh, in the night gallery uh what do you call heavyweight championship ring now the teleplay was by robert malcolm young based on the story the ring with the relevant ropes by edward d hoach now jeno swartz uh directed it and it starred uh, gary lockwood as a lead character jim fig chuck connors as, as rod blanco the great joan van Arca as sandra blanco the wife of uh his future opponent and uh, GT uh, Kumbuka uh, as Big Dan uh, Anger Orange. Now, this uh, this starts off very very bright with a, uh, a situation right out to the uh, uh, the the, uh, the Twilight Zone. Heavyweight boxer Fig Gary Lockwood, who played, of course, you know, uh, in the Star Trek pilot in 2001: Space Odyssey, has just won the world heavyweight title from Big Dan. Now, as his manager is shooing away the press from his dressing room, the man who has just uh, uh, beaten uh, shows up to him, his face beaten and swollen, and tells Jim that he's no more the champion than he, Big Dad, was, suggesting something about the fight may have not been on the up and up. Now, Jim is disturbed by the cryptic comment and disturbed even more, so when his manager returns and informs him that Big Dan was taken straight to the hospital after the bug for surgery, meaning he couldn't have just spoken to Jim, which uh, could have been a ghost or within his own mind. We don't know. Now, when he, uh, Jim's manager tells him to hit the shower, when he emerges, he finds he's no longer in the arena dressing room, but what seems to be a high-end hotel suite. An attendant hands him a towel and seems to expect Jim's presence. Jim questions the man but can get no answers as to where he or she or what's going on. Now, during this uh, situation, <coughs> he suspects he's been kidnapped when the attendant informs him that he's the guest of Mr. and Mrs. Rod Blanco and he meets Sandra Blanco, Joan Van Acker, of course, who is similarly evasive as the reason why Jim is there. She tells him she, uh, he must fight her husband, a former champion. Now, Rod, uh, played by the very, very athletic Chuck Connors, uh, takes Jim to a ring of fire where he explains that no one has ever defeated him. Jim, of course, plays along. Now, asleep before the bout, Sandra visits Jim in the bedroom, telling him to lose a Rod, suggesting that it would be better for him that this would occur. No one yet has defeated Rod, but she thinks Jim has the ability to do so, yet she urges him to lose. He replies he's never thrown a match and he's not about to start. Now, the fight takes place in an eerie private scene where Sandra and the other house staff watch. Now, it's very atmospheric, uh, kind of like a practice ring you would see in uh, something leading into, I don't know, an, an amateur fight, you know, when, when you have the ring with no people there. It's quite, it's quite well done. Now, the, the fight itself goes many rounds, and though uh, one would imagine Lockwood and Connors had the physical ability to box for the screen, Director General Swartz, uh, gives a shot after shot at about in cl a close up, suggesting that stunt doubles at most of the fighting, diminishing the impact of the scene. Uh, the match finally ends with a knockout in favor of Figs. Uh, the referee announces the champion is dead. Long live the new champion. The silent house staff rise from the seats to honor the new champion. Figs looks down at Blanco's beaten swollen face, 
much like Big Dan's from the previous bout, but here's where the similarities end. His face and body wither decay, and he becomes a skeleton corpse on the boxing ring's mat. Who he was, Fig wonders in astonishment. The attender answers, he was the real champion, having won the title in 1861, over a century prior. He defended his title successfully ever since, until this bout. It now becomes clear that Jim will replace Blanco as the host who uh, must attempt to defeat each successive champion. Now, for me, like I said, it's well well put together. But, like, some people have criticized the uh, the cinematography and putting it all together. But it seems to be you got to be a boxy fan to really get it. Who is the real champion of the world? Is it John L. Sullivan? Because, you know, he uh, he rarely lost in a ring. Jack Johnson gave up his title because of nefarious legal uh, challenges against him. Uh, did uh, Jack Dempsey, Dempsey really need to fight Gene Tunney? Is Mike Tyson really uh, not as good as Buster Douglas? There's always been some question if that the gods determine who is the real heavyweight champion of the world. And it was a, a episode of its time because, as we remember, in the early 1970s, you had Frazier, Foreman, Ali, all these top contenders, Jerry Corey, George Chevallo. Uh, boxers seen as gods, especially the heavyweight division back then, but in 2021, not so much. Now, people have criticized what what story was uh, the word he trying to uh, say, but like I said, I think they're just demanding way too much. And like for the for a third season episode, like I said, it was uh, pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty consistent. What I really don't understand is why this episode wasn't not say redone, but rejigged for the new Twilight Zone in 85 or the, the revised Twilight Zone from approximately more than a decade ago in the modern modern era. I'd like to see another take on this because with the right hand it would seem you could expand on the concept, talk about you know the sundry uh, mafia that was as part of boxing, you know, put it in the 1960s or 70s. I, I think you'd... So the concept alone he tried to be like Rod Serling, but if Rod Serling would have done this episode or wrote it, I think it'd be much better. But for me, it's three stars out of five. It is what it is. But the cinematography and seeing two very athletic actors and Gary Lockwood and Chuck Connors, Connors himself a former multi-sport athlete, Gary Lockwood always looked good uh, in every movies he, he did. You know, whether it be you know action or uh, uh, intellectual or whatever. But like I said. For, for me, personally, it is one of my top five episodes of the final season. But, of course, that's not saying much. So we'd like to say thank you to uh, uh, David Jewell's, uh, uh, what do you call, blog. Uh, who we took some of the information here. But from a personal perspective, I see where David's coming from. Check out his uh, davidjewell.wordpress.com. Check it out. He's a big fan of Night Gallery. But for me, like I said, it works for me. But I'm not the target audience because I I respect any episode from the 1970s that takes on boxing because it's a hard thing to do because the drama is in the end of the fight, not the fight itself. If you look at Rocky, you know what I'm talking about. So, the ring with the red velvet ropes. Thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs>